Hey there! You know what's good? Pen meets. Because you meet people who are like-minded and then they show you pens and then you think, I want that pen. And that happened to me. It actually happened to me more than once, but this was a very specific occurrence with my friend Jack. I met Jack and Jack had a Delta... Oops, I just dropped it. <laughs> that Jack had a Delta Roma Imperiale, which I had never seen before. Now, his did not look like this because he had one of the Ebonite models. And after this pen meet, I thought, I want that pen. So I looked online, I found this. This is actually an exclusive to Airline International. So I, I saw they had one for sale, I contacted them, we talked a bit about the price, and then I picked this up. This is a very interesting pen. 25 made. In this case, as I said, 25 uh, for Airline International. There was a second edition which was also transparent, but which was yellow. This is all clear and it is crystal clear. It is really, really, really nicely polished. Look at that. That is very, very clear. So that's really nice. A large pen, definitely an oversized pen. 14 karat number 8 gold nib, ebonite feed, piston filler. Uh, there's a lot going for this pen. So I'm going to cover the parts of the pen. I'll do a writing sample and I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it. One thing, I can't show you the box because I left the box elsewhere because it was a bit too large to travel with. Uh, but I have taken pictures of the box so I'll put those in the post of the website so you can see what the box looked like. Because it was a very nice box, Delta did pretty big boxes, a bit absurd, but it looks cool. So I'll show you that in pictures on the website. Let's get started. Okay, so here we go with the Delta Roma Imperiale, made to uh, sort of commemorate the Roman Empire that at some point spanned a significant part of the world. This is the pen next to a Twisby Diamond 580 to give you a bit of a, a size reference, so this is for sure an oversized pen, there is no doubt about it. Okay, so what do we have? A clear pen made of resin, very nicely polished, you can see how clear this pen is and how clearly you can see all the parts. Hand turned from solid bars. Uh, as I said, I think the regular Roma Imperialis, they, the, I think there were three finishes. Uh, they were all ebonite, so hard rubber. But this line was exclusive to Airline International. The Delta uh, Roma Imperiale demo. Number nib, uh, sorry, number eight nib, 14 karat gold, ebonite feed, piston filler, that, that sort of wretched type that, I mean the ratchet, not the wretched with W-E, sorry, sorry, W-R-E, uh, that, that Delta does. I can't really use it because there's ink now, but if you turn this, uh, you'll hear that, that sort of wretched sound. 25 made, let's look at the parts of the pen. Top of the cap, the finial, crystal clear. I really like that. You can see the screw in there, suspended in time, quite nice. Large clip, not the, the very typical, a lot of Delta pens have this sort of clip. This is not a Delta, but it's this type of clip. Um, and this is a very nice and broad, tapers down, I really like it. These trims uh, are Vernet, so 92.5% silver, sterling silver with, uh, with gold plating on top. Clip, little wheel and this beautiful large center band with a lot of detail on it. It says here Delta Italy Roma Imperiale Demo and you can see again how very clear that material is. You can see the, the nib, the feed, etc. Barrel, slightly bulbous, fat, tapers down till the end where you have the blind cap which is engraved with the number, in this case 18 out of 25 pens and the piston turning knob, which again I will not engage right now because there's ink in the pen and I want ink all over the cap. The cap unscrews. The section is very wide and fat. This is not for everyone, but I'll come back to that. You can see the ink inside, of course, because it is a clear pen. You have that nice flat feed that Delta used to do. I always enjoyed that. Ebonite, number 8 nib, 14 karat gold. Lovely scroll work and detail in there. I really do like that, and this happens to be a fine nib. Large pen, fat pen, and yet it posts securely to make it even bigger, just in case this was not large enough for you. 
very pleasant pen. But let's see how it writes. Oops, sorry. One day I'll figure out the zoom options on my own camera. Delta Roma Imperiale. Demo. The nib is a fine 14K. And the ink is the very simple, classy, evergreen Waterman Serenity Blue. This nib is very smooth, especially for a fine nib. I find it particularly smooth and it runs like a beauty. Nice, juicy. That was, I think, me causing that skip. I have written extended periods with this pen. There has not been any ink starvation. It keeps writing. It keeps this juicy. It doesn't run dry. Absolutely beautiful. Wetness. On many Italian pens, wetness is no joke, and this pen is no exception. That is a wet writer. Line variation. It is a gold nib, but it's not a flex nib. You can squeeze out a little bit, but be very, very careful when you do that. Reverse writing, for those of you who like that, very scratchy. I'm not going to push that. That is very unpleasant. So that doesn't really work, but you already have a, well, I was going to say you have a fine line to begin with, but for many companies, I think this would be a medium, which I don't mind so much. I love this pen. So let's talk about what I like about this pen and what I not like about this pen. And given that it's actually running pretty dry, that's that ratchet. You see this part moving, right? Interesting. Okay, likes and dislikes. Okay, what do I like, what do I not like about the Delta Roma Imperiale? And I've just smeared some ink on the inside of the cap. Well, this is a pen I bought. I loved it. The first time I used Jax, I was immediately in love, so it's clear that I like the pen. Otherwise, I would not have bought it. So, for me, it has more pros than cons. Some of the pros for me. Beautiful pen. Oversized. I love larger pens. That's no secret. I love big pens, and I cannot lie. You also know I do if you've been watching my videos for a while, so this pen has a lot going for me. Plus 14 karat number 8 nib, plus ebonite feed, plus uh, piston filler. A lot going for it. I know this is resin, it's not ebonite, it's nothing fancy, but do not underestimate the importance of the level of polishing. It's not that easy to polish a pen to such standards that it becomes this crystal clear. So that is something that is very important and that should not be underestimated. Most importantly to me, the pen writes beautifully, flawlessly, juicy, wet, rich ink flow, does not run dry, beautiful ebonite feed, works really well. Things I don't like so much. The bulbous section does not bother me, but as you can see, if I hold it, my fingers are not touching. People with smaller hands have commented on the fact that this is not an easy pen to use for them. So if you have smaller hands, I would not necessarily recommend getting this pen. Final thing, it's not cheap. The MSRP when it was introduced was $13.95 and since prices have gone up. I negotiated a bit on this one. I paid what I think is a fair price, $1,500. That's not cheap, by no means. But to me, that was worth it. A very luxurious pen and I love it. I absolutely love using this pen, but it's not cheap. And there's no two ways about it. It's an expensive pen. Okay, so there we have it. I hope this was useful and um, I'll gladly see you later. Bye bye.